Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again with the all new Aya Neo Pro. And in this video, we're gonna be testing out some emulation on this handheld device. Now, if you're not familiar with the Aya Neo Pro, I've already made one video going over this whole unit. If you're interested in checking that out, I'll leave a link in the description, but I will give you a couple refreshers in case it's the first time you're seeing the Pro model of the Aya Neo. Now, the one I have in my possession is the retro power version. As you can see by the color scheme, we kind of have that retro look going on. And as for the specs, the Pro model is actually powered by the Ryzen 7 4800U. The older Aya Neo or the first gen Aya Neo had the 4500U, but the Pro model is powered by the Ryzen 7 4800U. We've got 8 cores and 16 threads with a base clock of 1.8 GHz and a boost up to 4.2. Built in Radeon 8 graphics and we can overclock these up to 2000 MHz. 16 GB of LPDDR4X RAM running at 4266 MHz. A 7 inch IPS display at 1280 by 800 and this one has the 1 TB NVMe SSD. And I'm running Windows 10 on this unit here. So in this video, we're gonna be testing out some emulation on this awesome Ryzen-powered handheld gaming PC. We're gonna go with some Dreamcast, some PSP, some PS2, some Wii U, some PS3, and a few more. But before we jump right into testing, I did have a couple people asking me to test out LaunchBox or BigBox on the Aya Neo Pro. And what you're seeing right now is actually running from an external hard drive. I haven't set it up completely on the unit itself. This is my big build on a seven terabyte drive. And as you can see, it does work really well on this unit. We have more than enough power to push big box basically as far as we wanna go with it. I'm using Vikings colorful light theme right now. And if you wanted to go with a different front end, you could always do that. I'm sure Hyperspin would run great here, Coin Ops. Personally, I like LaunchBox and Big Box. I've already got it set up. And for me, it just makes it a lot easier to go through my games and choose what I wanna play. We can also change these themes out really easily. I'll just head over here. We'll go with the default theme. Gives it a totally different look. But yeah, if you want to run some type of front end on the Aya Neo Pro, you're not going to have any issues doing it. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into some emulation testing. We're going to start off light here with Dreamcast. So here we have the Redream emulator, and I've only taken this up to 1280 by 960 because the built-in screen is only 1280 by 800. You'll see that with most of the stuff I run in this video on the built-in screen. We're going to stick around that 720p mark because after all, it's not going to make a huge visual difference upscaling all of this stuff on the built-in screen. But when it comes to Dreamcast emulation, using the Redream emulator, as long as the game's compatible, you shouldn't have any issues at all running it. And the way I got it set up right now is at 11 watts. We do have a couple presets with this unit. We can go to five watts, 11 watts, 15, and 20. And then from there, you can actually do a custom up to 45, but that's kind of pushing it with this hardware. Moving over to some PSP emulation using the standalone version of PPSSPP. Vulcan back in, 2x resolution, and yes, we can go much higher with this unit, but like I mentioned, screen resolution is going to play into all of this. We've still got that TDP set at 11 watts, and it's running really good, as you can see. Even at 11 watts, we can take this game up to around 4x, and when it comes to the harder-to-run stuff, like the God of War series or even Midnight Club, it's going to do it just fine at 11 watts, 2x resolution. Here's Ghost of Sparta, running at 60. So I'd say that PSP emulation is good to go on this device. And keep in mind, we can do video over USB Type-C. If you wanted to do these games in 4K, you'd have to take it up to around 20 watts, but it's going to handle it. Taking it up just a bit to some GameCube emulation using the Dolphin emulator, we're still at 11 watts, we're at 720p, Vulcan back in, we're getting amazing performance here. Now, Time Splitters 2 isn't a hard game to run when it comes to GameCube emulation, but personally, I always like testing this one out because it's still one of my favorite games on GameCube. Now, there are some harder ones to run. One that comes to mind is F-Zero, and I did test it out. With this one here, we're still at 11 watts, and it's running great at 720p. Remember, we're using that Vulcan back end. I also tested DirectX 11, and I had similar performance, but with this one, I did have a few more dips, so I stuck with Vulcan. All right, so when it comes to PS2 emulation using PCSX2 at 720p, I did have to take the wattage up to get this to run properly. 
I've actually gone to 20 watts in the IS space. It's really easy to change the wattage on this. Like I mentioned, we have presets for 5, 11, 15, and 20, and then from there you can do your custom. But we did have to go up to 20 watts to get this at 720p. There's some games that will do it at 11, but I just kept it at 20. And even some of the harder to emulate stuff, like Gran Turismo 4, does run well with the DirectX 11 backend, 720p, and the TDP set at 20 watts. I've never had really good luck with 3DS emulation on these APUs, and it really comes down to OpenGL performance from the built-in GPU. Hopefully, in the future, the Citra team can implement something like either DirectX 11 or Vulkan that would definitely help out. I believe we have more than enough CPU power here, but it really comes down to that OpenGL performance not being up to par. Moving over to some original Xbox emulation using CXBX Reloaded, I did have to turn the sound off real quick due to copyright and music, but as you can see, when it comes to Jet Set Radio Future, we're getting really good performance. We're at 60 FPS, and this was actually really surprising. I know we're only at around 720p, but it's still doing a great job. I also tested Panzer Dragoon, and with this one, I did have some sound issues, and I've had this before on other mobile APUs. Now we're getting great performance here, we're at 60, but you will hear the sound cut out every once in a while. There it goes. So yeah, this is an issue I always run into with mobile APUs in this specific game. So now it's time for some Wii U using the SimU emulator. Vulcan back in, 720p, I'm getting great performance with a ton of this stuff. We're still at that 20 watt preset and this is running at 60. Now this doesn't mean that every single game is going to run at 60 because when I move over to Breath of the Wild, unfortunately, even at 35 watts, I can't get this to run constantly at 60. In my previous Aya Neo Pro video, I did show this game running, but it was at 30 and it does a great job even at 20 watts. I was really hoping we could get this to run at a constant 60, but even at 35 watts, it's struggling to hit that 60 mark. So you will just have to lock this at 60, but it's still a really enjoyable experience. And the developers of SemU have come so far with this emulator. I mean, it's absolutely amazing to see this running. And the final emulator I wanted to show off was RPCS3 for some PS3 emulation. Here we have Tekken 6, obviously it's the PS3 version. Vulcan back in, 720p, looking absolutely amazing. Now when it comes down to it, Tekken 6 isn't the hardest game to emulate with RPCS3, nor is the next game I'm going to show off. But when it comes to those really hard games, like God of War 3, this little unit isn't going to run them. But games like Skate 3, it's totally possible to run these at 60fps, but you will have to take that wattage up. This emulator here does love extra cores and threads, and we do have plenty of them. And with that wattage up, we can get the clocks on that CPU to get this to run at full speed. But in the end, I mean, it's still really amazing to see PS3 emulation on a handheld like this. That CPU does get a bit warm at 35 watts, but I never had it thermal throttle. It didn't hit 95 degrees. This is something I would only recommend in dock mode, but it can be done. So overall, the Aya Neo Pro definitely has enough power for emulation. As you saw in this video, it handles Dreamcast, PSP, we've got some PS3, Wii U, GameCube. I didn't test out any Wii, it's going to run it just fine, and anything under what we tested will run at full speed. Sega Saturn, N64, SNES, Neo Geo, Neo Geo CD, so on and so on. This has turned out to be a really awesome handheld gaming PC, and if you're interested in checking out some PC games running on the Aya Neo Pro, definitely check out the first video I made. I'll leave a link for that in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know. I've got one more video coming up with some PC games if you want me to throw a certain game in there or another emulator. Just leave it down in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning more about the Aya Neo Pro, I will leave a link in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.